Hi everybody, welcome to Archie Marathon. We are in Australia's capital city, Sydney. Canberra. What? Canberra. Oh. Roll intro. You roll down the hill. You can. No. With COVID kicking our butts, uh, we've had to travel within Australia, which has been a blessing, really, because we've come to amazing places like Canberra, which is unique, and it, it was the only the second... In the 20th century, yeah, there's only one of the designed capital cities. Yeah, so this is like a phenomenon that is happening, what, basically once a week in China, where instant cities are popping up in rural areas. Mm. Uh, in um, the, at the turn of the century... You know, 1911, the competition. With Walter Billy Griffin and his wife Marion Griffin. Marion Mahoney Griffin. One of the foremost pioneers female architects mm -hmm. in the world. Isn't undercredited. Undercredited. You know those famous Frank Lloyd Wright uh, perspectives? That was her. Nice. Mm. Anyway, they did this competition and they won. In Chicago, while, while I was working for Frank. Should we do the rest somewhere else? As we were saying, the Griffins won. Designing an instant city in what, if you look at the old photos, was just farmland mm. with a creek. They dammed this and created Lake Burley Griffin. Well, they originally had a lot more geometric, um, very circular schemes and sort of radial plans of, and we we're up on Mount Ainsley at the start. That was sort of the start of the axis, as we saw. And uh, and we have the War Memorial on one end and the Parliament on the other end of this grand axis. But there are other axes that kind of branches off to sort of the actual city centre, civic and um, defence over there. And like all instant cities, Canberra is weird. I like it. I'm a big fan of Canberra, but it's weird. There's not many people around uh, and it covers a huge area. And like most instant cities, all instant cities, it's dominated by cars. Um, that was the cool new technology of the time. But it is really worth looking at um, Walter Burley Griffin's original scheme. Uh, it explains a lot of the geometries and the circles because he felt that a tram system is the best transport outcome. And instead of being like a lot of tram networks where you're just going in a linear pattern, stopping and then running back the other way, the curves were meant to be part of this completely ongoing tram system so you're always looping around and coming back on itself oh and that's why you've got like parliament house was meant to be the end of one circle mm. uh, even where empire house is there's this weird round park just it seems so redundant but that was going to be part of this um this tram course uh, but what's interesting with the circles though it's actually very hard to orientate yourself oh my god we j it just happened before let's go to fishwick and it's pointing that way and you look at google earth and it's like fishwick's that way no, because with a grid, you, you kind of understand orientation. You kind of go generally the sun direction. You kind of get where you are, but a circle, you just, you're just traveling along <laughs> and suddenly going, which direction am I pointing? Yeah. Where's the sun? What time of day? It takes a lot more to calculate, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So there's something about, you know, it looks great on paper, um, but yeah. yeah. Beautiful plans. Beautiful plans, but yeah. Yeah. Actually, you, you have to know the area, but if you're visitors like us, I think, yeah. Half the time, without GPS, I think it would just be lost. The Griffins won this international design competition uh, for a number of reasons, but one of their interesting aspects was instead of treating, like, treating it like urban design, they treated it like landscape design. So they saw this barren paddock with a creek running through it and thought this needs to be landscaped before it can become a city, which is interesting. And that plays right down not only into these civic gestures, but down into just the single home as well. You know, they, were, they decided it was going to be the garden city, so there were no front fences. But it wasn't in a way that it was like the romantic kind of idea of picturesque. Mm. You no, know, it's not this kind of fake natural environment. You know, they were, the, the landscape features were geometric. They were intentional interventions in the landscape uh, rather than this, hey, as if this is all natural. Yeah, but they did want native species, didn't they? They did want native species, and uh, yeah, but the local forester just wanted European species. So, so, which is kind of interesting because we're here in autumn and you've got some beautiful colours. 
Yeah, but yeah, they fell in love. They did fall in love with the Australian natives. Yeah, uh, the Griffins were constantly coming up against conservative politicians that were constantly trying to undermine them. And so we see this odd city that isn't real. That sort of is a, a shadow of what it was intended to be. And just like the Opera House with Jorn Utzon, blame the architect, blame the creative, the person trying to create something. And what has happened with both the Griffins and with Jorn Utzon is they got to a point where they said, you know what, we are out. And, they, and we lost two incredible, important mid-century designers uh, because of poor, short-sighted politics. Well, the Griffins luckily actually stuck around in Australia for a while. Mm. Uh, they, unlike Utzon, who mainly worked on Opera House, they did they, they struggled for work. They, they did look for a lot of uh, projects. They did do quite a few buildings, a lot of incinerators in Sydney. Beautiful. It's incinerators? Incinerators. There's right. one in Melbourne, you know? No, really. By then. We'll go. We'll take him there. They did Capital Theatre in Swanson Street in Melbourne. Yes, yeah, it's pretty lovingly great. restored by Six Degrees Architects. Mm. We'll go there one day. Yeah, they did stick around, didn't they? Um, but they, they just didn't, they ran out of work. You know, they did Castle Craig, you know, in Sydney. Um, mm. Beautiful stuff. But yeah, uh, again, land that, I mean, they basically started the Sydney school. They, the whole crazy landscape, just, people just didn't know how to deal with them. Like, they wanted the lawn and backyard and stuff. But no, it's beautiful rolling landscape. Let's work with it. And, uh, you know, they, they came up with Castle Craig. Yeah, right. OK, because, yeah, you can see that throughout the Australian landscape where there's been this very English sense uh, of landscape and trying to tame the landscape to be that way and then we've got our industries of cattle and and sheep which decimate the the, mm. the local um uh, flora and fauna um and so they the americans who yeah the americans who understood our landscape more than yeah anything okay. so they gave they, they gifted a lot to the australian architectural scene mm. But yeah, our trip in Canberra, I guess uh, there are very popular things like the Parliament House and the War Memorial and, uh, you know, the, we should not speak of, <laughs> the... Don't speak of it. Museum. The evil that shall not be named. Uh, yeah, and museums and other things. Uh, we, we will go to things that are not that well known. But they are friggin' awesome. And we'll go to places, all of the places are, are public places, they're, they're accessible. Like the church isn't, but you can walk up to that and you can look at it. Like these are places that you can look at from the outside at the very least. Definitely, which, yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, there's lots of bikes fanging around. It's a relatively flat city, you know, sort of surrounded by hills. I love walking, though the, the, some things are quite far apart, or riding around this town. Um, being in a car actually sucks a bit. Um, even though there's not a lot of traffic, so riding around this town is great. Um, and it's diverse, like the, the whole parliamentary area and the law courts is, is really interesting, but sparse. Civic is strange. Weird. Yeah. You described it as, a, as though it's in a Washington DC kind of way. It's, you can it, yeah. tell it's offices that aren't, that are, uh, don't have people in them. Yeah, and then you've got uh, that, yeah, strange. And big um, parts of of the Griffin's um, plan, these circles that act like massive roundabouts, they're just full of like car parks and things like that. Mm. So it's like there's not really, there's this overall vision, but there's no, this in-between space. Mm. There's beautiful little things, and there's this massive vision, but there's no, um, there isn't that beautiful connection. I think there's a lot of interesting architectural projects around now that, that are really trying to retrofit it with really fine-grained stuff. Yep. Uh, Acton. New Acton, for example, you know, the landscape and the little kiosks mm. and what have you. And even just, just today when we had the coffee earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Just little pavilions. That, yeah. Mm. And it seems like architects and designers at all scales are getting involved in that. So New Acton is quite a big precinct that's been sort of master planned, but it has that fine grain. So it's very skillfully done. But some of the younger practitioners are building these beautiful little moments and finding these leftover bits of space. The, the kind of thing you really need for a city to thrive mm. is that the leftover space is being revitalized and turning into something really wonderful. And this is in the middle of a commercial development. Yeah, this is very un-Canberra scale. Exactly. 
So it's, instead of that administrative big scale, yeah. they really tried to use new actin as an example of how to humanise the spaces. Wow. And luckily it's because heritage, this is the job that heritage does for you. Because the original barracks are here, it's given this a certain type of scale. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you can still get away. It's a good lesson of how you can get away with bigger scale things, but um, also think about the human scale. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to choose either or, you can do both and. We're at the National Portraiture Gallery. No, we're not. We're at the National Portrait Gallery. That's the first time I realised that. I turned around just then and I just learned that it's not called the National Portraiture Gallery. <laughs> I just turned around and went, oh, I've been calling it the wrong thing the whole time. Huh? Oh, dude. Because. Go around it. Get, get it. Let's okay. sneeze that out. It's called art. You wouldn't get it, it's called art. And what I did was called performance art. Um, and then when you move between spaces, these huge concrete beams that continue straight through the structure actually give you a really human scale as you pass under them. One of my favourite places in Canberra. I don't know how you feel about it, but this, this is the old Parliament House. Yeah, which was a temporary Parliament House that lasted, what, 70 years? Yeah. And um, so around Parliament, there's all of these, uh, there's all of these embassies. Chinese Embassy, the American, the British, all these bits of amazing real estate gifted to another country to set up an embassy. And at no point has anybody set up an embassy for the traditional owners of, of Australia. So in 1972, traditional owners had to set it up themselves. So they've got the tent embassy directly in front of the original Parliament House, um, which is on axes. So the new Parliament House all the way down to the War Memorial and since 1972, there's been this temporary tent embassy in protest. And it signifies so much sadness in terms of the way that um, Indigenous Australians have been treated. But I feel great optimism whenever I come here. It's lasted. Something so impermanent in nature has lasted against sort of the tyranny um, that people have suffered through. So I love coming here and seeing the sovereignty sign right on that axis back towards the War Memorial facing the white Australia. Yeah, the very, yeah, the, literally. Yeah, the, literally the white Australia, colonialism and the rest. And there's obviously a, an architecture narrative here, this idea of sort of the violence of permanency of the structures we build ver versus the impermanence of lightweight structures and temporary structures. And it's beautiful smell of campfire here. Yeah, I think they've always got fire burning. So I'm not really big on symbolism in architecture, but I feel like this one gets it right. So this is the Great Hall. This is the Great Hall. Which yeah. is the circulation space and its main atrium. Yeah, and the public hall. And the great thing about it is that the courtrooms all open straight off this, this hall. So it is all about transparency and openness. So most people come to Canberra and they would go and visit the National Gallery of Australia. But if you're not driving, and which is good, and you cycle around or walk around the city, uh, you probably miss the car park, which is actually pretty freaking amazing. I have a look, so it's, it's soil up there, and then they've got these outlet valves that let all the excess water come in here. This is one huge concrete gutter, and then it all runs down here into like what I assume is sumps and pipes under there. That is full on. So look at these huge beams. How gorgeous is that? But then they've got this big V structure. The steel frame against the, uh, the, the concrete as well. Yeah, and, and that descends into the garden rather than, you know, it kind of blurs the boundary between what's garden and what's building. We've got the glass pavilion on one side with all of its glazing looking into this garden, but this is getting hit by the sun, which is shifting around that way. No, around that way. Yeah, west, around. yeah. So this is, the concrete's actually protecting those facades and you get really thin slots of glass. And even the bollards and the chains are so well thought about. They're like little missiles just stuck there. No fucking way. What? There is one of those, just one of those goddamn Robin Boyd Churchill House bollards. This Do is the most symmetrical place in the world there's not one on that side. Why is there one there? And it's just, what's it even doing? I feel like we're being followed. 
controlled by Robin Boyd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just created these sentient little bollards that follow us around everywhere. It's the same one. And it's not <laughs> a hole. Yeah, it's not a hole for a chain to go through. It's actually a camera. I think it's the rabbit holes that just <laughs> disappear in the... <laughs> <laughs> 1967, and the Institute of Architects decided they needed their own sort of embassy in a way. So it's in the main embassy area of Canberra. You know, the Garden City, the Bush Block, that really describes it beautifully. These series of roofs in the landscape, subtle, um, hidden. It's quite a good message for the Institute of Architects. Really reminds me of Alvaralta. And beautifully detailed. Don't you love the way that the brickwork goes up, but the timber is actually thicker than the bricks, so it all hangs out a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. And then that keeps going, so it hangs off about 100 mil from the tiled roof. So the materials are separated from each other, which makes them legible, but also means the timber's not going to rot. I didn't expect much. I thought it was just, oh, yeah, here's a roof, there's a skylight, so what? But it turned out that so what is a lot better than I expected. But, you know, it's timber, it's concrete block and asphalt tiles. So lightweight, easy, but it's doing a lot of work, which shows skill. And so incredibly symmetrical. You can see on this side where you've got these two steel columns and they're just free standing. On the other end, they're used for those doors that we just came through to open out the entire corner. Canberra's got these pretty awesome bus stops that's out of concrete. Hey. Hi. What are you, what are you doing there? These are my favourite things in uh, all of Canberra, I think. Bus stops. Do you know anything about these? No. In 1975, a guy called Clem Cunning Cummings designed this and uh, the Transport Authority put it out in a few locations and people hated them. <laughs> they hated them. But it's become much loved nowadays. At one point there was about 477 of them around Canberra. Um, so basically a concrete shell with little fiberglass windows in it. I think this is a Series 2. I think they'll be quite uh, useful in, in the windy, rainy weather. Well, the way they're designed is that, yeah, you, you get plenty of shelter, but they're actually meant to be angled like this towards the road. So you can sit in them, you can nestle in, but you can actually see the bus as it approaches. So it's always oh, orientated yeah. slightly at 45 degrees. The Series 1s, I believe, had a fiberglass um, sculpted seat in it, but that was removed for Series 2. So, Kev, I think we need to keep looking until we find an original Series 1. It is transparent both metaphorically, but also, you know, in, in real terms. You can see straight into all of the offices from the outside. And that says a lot about the value of the democracy. Absolutely. Value in a democratic, transparent society and not living in this paranoid fantasy where we need to hide from each other. I love this as an idea and as a built outcome. It just seems to sit in this landscape really well. The other side is a lot more formal, I think, mm. but it's still quite elegantly how it sits. Yeah. We are so privileged to be able to show you the inside of the Australian Academy of Science in Canberra. And check that out. More on theme. There Whoa. The, the domed sort of lights. And then there's no, Reflected. there's no stairs here. It's actually a ramp going all the way around. Oh, that is cool. Kev, it's another one. It's a conspiracy, man. This is a conspiracy. Why, why are these in just, it's the only one here. You know what I reckon they are? I reckon they're like space eggs that come down and land. Some face hugger. It's even got the chain hole, just like a Churchill house. Why is it here? I think it's maybe generic Canberra. Yeah, but why is there only one of them? There's none else, anywhere else. Yeah. It's weird. This is powerful. And beautiful. And I don't, again, another thing I don't think people would visit in Canberra, but I think it's one of the gems. I don't think people know it exists. Camp Canberrians do. Yeah. It's pretty hot. Come check it out. And hopefully, like us, some jerk will come and hassle you for filming a government building. And there's something you all need to understand. It took me a while to really process this, but none of us 
will ever be as good as Taglietti. Best Australian architect ever? Probably. He's like the Australian Scarpa. And then this is uh, Student Housing by John Andrews from 1973. 1973. You can see what's happening here though. He's designed one basic module and then he stacked it up. It's kind of Biage uh, before Biage was Biage. Wow. That's pretty efficient, isn't it? Design it once. Repeat. <laughs> Array, matrix. <laughs> like, imagine that. He, he had to draw all this by hand. Imagine it nowadays. Design it once and then just array. <laughs> that looks hot. Nowhere near the center of Canberra. And look what I just found. It's a concrete bollard? That's just a concrete bollard, but this is one of Robin Boyd's concrete bollards from Churchill House. It's even got the chain hole. Why the hell is that here? Why is it here, Kevin? Why is it here? Some drunken student stole it. And put it somewhere really functional. Yeah. I have a big soft spot for Canberra. I love it and everybody should visit it. Um, it is wonderfully weird. What do you guys think? Have you been here? Are there any, do you like, are there any sort of places that you think we should check out in the future? We also haven't visited everything. There's a lot to see. There's a, there's a few more on my list that we just didn't make this time. This time. Do you want to be part of an Archie Marathon? We might actually run a tour of Canberra. Uh, so let us know, leave a comment if you want to join us on a, on a tour, spend a few days here. Do some Archie draw. Yeah, Archie Marathon draw. We love you guys. We'll see you in the next one. We'll have Azio running down here. As if we haven't been annoyed enough by security everywhere we go, Andrew's shooting finger bullets into the handle. <laughs> <laughs>